Welcome to the Love Lab Podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're a man, woman, single, or couple, this is the show for you. Because, well, sex matters. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Celine Remy. Welcome back to the Love Lab Podcast. This is episode 25, which is <laughs> how to have the best orgasms ever. All right, so obviously the Love Lab podcast has a pretty strong emphasis on sex, and most people, uh, when they think of sex, they think of orgasm. Orgasm, 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 <laughs> orgasm. It's all about the orgasm for what most people. What do you people. want? Orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> so we figured it was appropriate that we should do a show on orgasms. Well, plus I want to say that everybody wants bigger, better, more things of everything, and that does include orgasms. That's right. In fact, we were recently at a sex party, and you know, if you've ever been to a sex party, well, not all sex parties, but some sex parties, they kind of do like an opening circle where people kind of go around and say, hey, what I would love to happen tonight is this, and it's an opportunity for people to say, like, this is kind of what they're open to, so the other people in the room can kind of go, oh, okay, you know. Cool. Good to know. Anyway, the point is, is that there was one woman in particular and she said, well, I I really, I don't know how this is going to happen, but somehow tonight uh, I'm going to have an orgasm. (laughs) (laughs) And I just thought it was such a funny thing to say. Everybody's coming up with these elaborate scenarios of things that they want. And she was just like, I I don't really care how it happens. I just want to have an orgasm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so we know what her goal was. I don't know if she achieved it, but... <laughs> <laughs> I believe she did. <laughs> so orgasm, is it's a big focus for most people. Um, and we'll talk about whether or not you should necessarily focus on it, but uh, in either case, we're going to talk about the different types of orgasms, the different levels of them, ways to intensify. There's all there's so much good stuff when it comes to orgasms, so you should really hang in there. <laughs> Well, one thing that I really wanted to share is uh, from having worked with over a thousand different people, what I've noticed is that the way we approach sex tends to make our orgasms not that spectacular. And there's something I like to say that people experience a little like genital sneeze. You know, it's just like goes through you, it comes out and you're done. And well, sure, it feels somewhat good, but it's really not that great. And... (laughs) Ultimately, what we would really like to experience is more to have what I said, like an orgasm buffet, where you get to choose, pick and choose which one you want, how much of it you want. And there's like unlimited supply because it's an always like refilling buffet right there. (laughs) Yeah. And the thing that most people don't realize, and this is something we try to teach everybody that we work with, is that the reason why their orgasms are kind of like, you know, we we use the term genital sneeze. (laughs) It's because they don't take the time Mm -hmm. to really build the energy. They just go for the fast orgasm. And the fast orgasm is not necessarily the strongest, the longest, the most amazing. But because most people never get beyond that, they don't know that their orgasms could be even Mm -hmm. bigger, better, more powerful, mind-blowing, like, can't walk straight afterwards. So that's the best they know. So that's what they go for. And if you don't know what you don't know, then you can go there. Uh, But ultimately, you need to be into a heightened state of pleasure. And usually the marker is about 45 minutes. How do you know it's 45 minutes? (laughs) Well, we are at the Love Lab here. (laughs) I was going to say, don't just glance over that little fact there. This is research that we've been doing on our own, (laughs) where... Where, you know, we generally have a rough idea of about what time it is when we start. And sometimes when we get to that place, Mm -hmm. we'll glance over at the clock and go, okay, how long has it been? Yeah. And what we've determined is is that that roughly around the 45-minute mark, and now I know a lot of you are listening going, 45 minutes? What the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) That's about three or four times longer than my normal session, If, if that's the case then uh, you should work with us or you should at least take our online programs, (laughs) figure out how to get to the 45 minute mark. But 
Um, anyway, the point is, is that we've determined that somewhere around that moment is when we start to really access those deeper mm-hmm. levels. Yeah. And actually, this is not just something that we found. Uh, other people, if you do your research, uh, people like David Data talk a lot about that. Uh, you do need enough time. And even physiologically for the body to start to relax. And really what I've noticed is that the two, at least 20 minutes. And oftentimes the, the, the brain is in the way, the body is not quite relaxed. And I really have to hang in there for the first 20 minutes and be like, okay, constantly bringing myself back into being present, into feeling my body. And, and we'll talk about those more in two ways to intensify your orgasms. Uh, but once that 20 minutes mark about 20 minutes gets passed it starts to become like much easier and and there's something deeper that starts to open up and ultimately like even if i were to experience a genital sneeze at the beginning the quality of the orgasm is very much different after a longer period of time so we're not saying like don't go for the genital sneeze it's just don't stop at the genital sneeze yeah (laughs) (laughs) and the thing is to be honest the genital sneeze sometimes i'll go for it i'll be like i really want that really fast explosion firework um and you know i just honor the fact that this is uh, my goal oriented practice of the day and i'll do it but most of the time i don't feel quite inclined to even go there because i know i know there's something so much better and uh, i'm the type of kid who can wait for the marshmallow so i can get a second (laughs) one so i'll just say with my orgasms referring to the marshmallow study that was done (laughs) and how those kids did yes fortunately you and i are both the kids that can wait for our marshmallows (laughs) so it works well for us but you know part of it is is that you have to build up the energy and, and that's the thing is, so, uh, you know, if this idea of energy is kind of new to you, uh, don't think we're necessarily going off into woo-woo hippie land here. There's lots of other uh, practices in the mainstream world that talk about that. From Tai Chi, right, it's all about building the energy, mm-hmm. or even martial arts. Let's say you're, uh, you've studied uh, traditional Japanese martial arts. And they're all about, they'll sit there and they'll do all these katas, right? And what are they doing aside from practicing? They're building the energy, building the energy, building the energy, and then they're shooting that energy out through their strikes, right? Mm-hmm. So Yeah, it, even different modalities like Reiki that uses things like that. And then even if you go through quantum physics and they start to study the effect of <laughs> energies and thinking and all of that. So, yeah. yeah, so the idea is that it takes some time to build that level of energy. Mm-hmm. And like I can say from a from a guy's point of view, you know, if I go for the genital sneeze type of orgasm, especially if that also includes an ejaculation, you know, I'll feel really tired right afterwards. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the whole sort of stereotypical like Oh, he's a guy, he just had an orgasm and now he falls off to sleep when the mm-hmm. woman really wants to cuddle and talk, right? Like, Because you'll feel that sense of depletion. Mm-hmm. But it works for both gender, by the way. Um, even for women, sometimes they're like, oh, I feel so um, tired or like so done. Yeah. And I'm like... Well, I can only speak for myself. I could say that that's how it, it feels sometimes. Uh-huh. But it's good, it's good for people to know that it can yeah. you know, be women too. But I just want to finish that point and say that if I take the time to build the energy, mm-hmm. then I can have the orgasm and potentially the ejaculation and not feel depleted. Mm-hmm. because I've taken the time to cultivate that energy. I'm actually energized by it instead of feeling depleted by it. So I'm really curious, Kevin, to hear more about your experience as a guy um, with the difference between energetic versus physical orgasm. Um, and I know we've talked a lot in our podcast and also in our online courses about separating ejaculation and orgasms, that they are two different things for men. Um, and so I'm curious to hear more about that experience for you as a guy. Yeah, this is a great topic and one that we like to talk about a lot because most men just, they don't know it at all all. So it's really valuable information. If you're a guy listening out there, listen up. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, most men think that uh, an orgasm and an ejaculation are the same thing. So they think that, you know, that's, you know, when you say orgasm, it means you ejaculate it. Obviously, not the case at all. The Taoists have been teaching this for, I don't even know, thousand years, Mm -hmm. whatever it is. (laughs) Um, 
And it's absolutely not true. And once you learn how to separate your orgasm and your ejaculation, you'll know for sure that it is definitely not true. So you can have an orgasm, which is this amazing feeling of energy moving through your body. And you have that same sense of satisfaction that you have uh, when you ejaculate, but without the physical ejaculation and without the feeling of like, like giving up all of your energy that, that you've just given everything and now you're exhausted, right? That sort of depletion that you can feel. And what's, what's wonderful is that it, once you learn how to do that, you can have as many energetic orgasms as you want as a man until you either decide that you're done making love or you decide that I think I want to ejaculate now, but the choice is yours. Mm -hmm. Now, how they differ, um, you know, the energetic ones can be, can be, not necessarily, feel a little milder. They don't feel like the massive explosion that you're used to when you ejaculate. Um, But they can also be pretty intense. And if you've gotten to the point where you sort of know how to move energy through your body and you can move it through your whole body, your whole body can start to like tingle Mm -hmm. and feel energized. And it's really quite an amazing sensation. It's, you know, if, if you make love long enough and you go through enough cycles like that, you're literally high. Mm-hmm. You're high, but you didn't take any substance whatsoever <laughs> other than love. <laughs> and that's really amazing. It's a, it's a great feeling. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes I do have um, energetic orgasms that are as intense as an ejaculation, as like a normal ejaculation. Mm-hmm where literally it'll even trigger the same muscle reflex Mm -hmm. where you're feeling the pulsing that you would feel when you ejaculate, only you're not actually ejaculating. Mm -hmm. Those ones are really cool because you're like, (laughs) whoa, that was intense and I didn't ejaculate. I'm not tired. I don't feel any sense of energetic depletion and fuck yeah, let's do another one. Yeah, and I'm still hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and that's another good point, right? You you won't lose your erection at all. You can have as many uh, energetic orgasms as you want, and you're not going to lose your erection. In fact, generally, the more I have, the harder it gets, mm. to the point where sometimes it feels like it's going to explode. <laughs> and I don't mean in an ejaculation. I mean literally explode like a balloon because it's so, <laughs> so intense. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty cool. I think for all our listeners um, here, our female listeners, we a lot of us can relate to those because I think that it is more common for us to experience different orgasms, uh, different levels, different type of orgasms from like it's it's a mild uh, tingly sensation to it's a totally mind-blowing experience to like, oh, actually there's no orgasms this time to like um, it's energizing. I mean, there's so many different levels and I think that as women, we tend to more um, maybe naturally like experience those and if we start to pay attention we can notice that there are the there's all these different sensations available to us and uh, so i think we can m- mostly relate to what you were sharing here kevin from that perspective um but something that i wanted to bring up here into this discussion is about also orgasms when we're talking about orgasms for women because we hear about clitoral orgasms and vaginal orgasms and cervical orgasms and there's a lot of different opinions when it comes to all of these orgasms and there's different people that say oh vaginal orgasms do not exist you know and the theory behind that is that the clitoris is not just a little button that's on the surface that we see. The clitoris has legs that go all the way down that um, are inside the vagina so that when you are having what you call a vaginal orgasms, basically it's because the legs of your clitoris are like engorged and it's also like uh, pulling everything up and all the tissues inside the vagina. So like it's like it's kind of still connected to the clitoris. So that's why most people that say vaginal orgasms don't exist is because the clitoris legs go in there and so it's still connected to the clitoris. Semantics. This is semantics, right? Because it's being triggered from a different part of the clitoris. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, but if we look, look at the anatomy of it, we have different nerves. 
different nerves that irrigate our genitals and we have different pathways for orgasms. And those nerves, we've got four nerves for the women and we've got, men only have three. So it's like, okay, we have multiple ways of experiencing orgasms through different nerves. And there's one nerve that's called the pedental nerve that's linked to our clitoris. And that's also is in the scrotum and penis for men. And that's what most people associate with this firework orgasm, with the sneeze orgasm, with like, okay, this might come a little quicker and that's the pedental nerve. But there is another nerve that's the vagus nerve. And that's only in the women where it's located there, where it's responsible for vaginal orgasms. And so... <sighs> If you have a different nerve and that it goes to your brain through these different pathways, then we're not so far off saying that you can experience vaginal orgasms. So whether or not it's linked to the clitoris because of its legs there or not, it doesn't really matter. There are different nerves here. And since I was telling you that there were four, I'm going to give you the, the two remaining. We have the hypogastric nerve, which goes from the uterus um, in the cervix. So see, like for cervicals orgasm, it's a yet another nerve here that gets activated. Um, and in the man, you find it in the prostate. Hence the whole like how the prostate is the male's G-spot, just like we talked about this in two our episode, I forgot which one it was, but the uh, couple's guide to Beginner's prostate massage. Beginner's guide to couple's prostate, prostate massage. massage. Exactly. So if you haven't listened to that and want to learn more about the prostate, go back to that episode. And then our fourth nerve is the pelvic nerve. And that one also transmits from the vagina and cervix and also from the rectum in both men and women here. And so we have different nerves. <laughs> We have different pathways that goes into the brain and give orgasm. Therefore, this is why orgasms are not just always showing up as one way. This is why it feels different. And if you learn to not always label orgasms, oh, this is a good orgasm, this is a bad orgasm, or not good orgasm. There's no such thing as bad orgasm. I know, an orgasm is an <laughs> orgasm. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm with you on that. <laughs> but if you stop to label those and just go with the experience of like, oh, today, uh, today I was able to really feel it or ride this wave, or like, and then some days it's more intense than others, and it's just how it is. I really see that the magic of orgasm starts to get there. Once you stop wanting to get to a certain place because the other day you experienced certain sensations, so therefore forever it will be the same. <laughs> right, because human bodies work like that. No, <laughs> they don't. They're always changing. <laughs> but tell us just, just maybe briefly, because I know that you experience all of these, this range of different types of orgasms. Is, is there a way that you could describe your experience of how you feel them differently? Mm. Well, I definitely would say that I have some orgasms sometimes where it really feels more superficial and very clit-oriented. And that happens with direct clitoral stimulation. And sometimes it literally kind of feels similar to what men tell me about that explosion of the ejaculation, where it's that firework and... I don't find it absolutely nourishing deeply, but sometimes it feels good, you know. So that's one level, one thing that I, I, I can experience. And then sometimes I feel more connected to my entire body. So it's not just located in my genitals, but I start to feel it, uh, let's say, in my heart area, or like I even get my breasts to feel buzzing or up my spine into my head, like more areas of the body. So it's not just, it's, it's more spread throughout and more of a full body experience. And then I think what you were talking about earlier between the physical and energetical, I see a different level of orgasms where it also brings emotions into the orgasms. And there could be tears, there could be laughter, uh, there could be even anger, like you don't know why, but something just comes out. Um, and then you get into this laughter that you can't stop, or then the tears are streaming down, and there's a profound release. But yet it's not a vaginal contraction, like of an orgasm of that because like that contraction, but you feel a release also that happens. So this is like also a different level there. And then there's really the, um, I'd say like kind of, I was going to say ultimate, but again, I'm labeling it here, but there's sometimes those orgasms that 
I don't know where my body starts, ends, what time of the day it is, or anything really, where there's like, it's kind of you lose sense of reality and step into that we'll connectedness. Call yeah. Other dimensional or multi dimensional <laughs> orgasm. Yeah. The lines start to blur. Wow. Ooh, trippy. Yeah. That's I like cool. those, but I can't order those on the menu. They just tend to surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> they just show you you show up to the restaurant and it's your lucky day. <laughs> you know, so so uh, thank you for answering that question. And what you're saying sounds somewhat similar to me uh, to the four levels of orgasm that are sometimes talked about. So um, maybe you've heard about Kadoshka and maybe you haven't because it's an um, ancient lineage that comes from the Mayans and Altecs. It's, it's a little bit like difficult to trace back and then it's mixed with the Native Americans. Anyway, they have some awesome, they've done some awesome, I want to say like research and explorations around sexuality and they've created a whole system. Um, and so it's called Kadushka and there's an amazing book that you can read. We'll put it into the show notes uh, um, if you want to learn more about that. But they've basically broken down orgasms into four different levels of orgasms. And what's interesting is that it's similar to what I just explained. So a level one is a when your body feels somewhat satisfied, but you want more. So, you know, like with that one I was talking about where it's more physical and you're like, you're done and it's like, oh, I could, I could go for more. So you, and also you tend to feel tired and basically you feel a moderate sense of satisfaction and it's all about the genital to genital connection and that sounds like what most people experience when they talk about what orgasm is like for them in the body that means people you've got three more levels you can go <laughs> so let's keep going up there and explore the second level of orgasm so what happens in a second level level two of orgasms it's it's more physical satisfaction and you also get a small gain of energy Ooh, uh-huh. oh, that's pretty cool the body is glowing it's flushed it's tingling and you can experience a brief moment of heart connection and a feeling of fulfillment. All right, now we're getting somewhere. We are. But I see that a lot of people sometimes that's when they're like, well, I had the most amazing sex. I felt that connection. Or that's what they talk about when they're like, I want more to sex than just the physical. I want that that spiritual piece or that emotional piece. Like people have used different words around it to describe it. But that's usually, I think, the level that people get to that they're like, wow, this is quite amazing. That's maybe somewhere around the 20 minute mark. <laughs> <laughs> Good just observation. Guessing. I like that, Kevin. <laughs> Um, a level, third level of orgasm. Okay, so during a level three orgasms, emotions, mind, body, and spirit feel connected. Oh, oh I'm getting tingly just from like <laughs> saying that, you know. You literally feel powerful charges. There's multiple climaxes and both partners experience a tremendous energy gain. That's what Kevin too was talking about when you feel super charged after the love making. You're like buzzing and it's like, wow. And one of the things that I love about that is that um, as a guy, yeah, I can feel that when I have my own you know, higher level energetic orgasms, but I also feel it when you do. Mm. So when you start to have higher level orgasms, like I always say, it, it's like, it's like sticking my penis in an electrical socket. <laughs> like the energy that, that flow that I feel coming from you supercharges me too. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. That is really cool. And I think that's what many people don't quite get. And when you go to that first orgasm and, and it just go too quickly, you don't build enough energy to get to those higher levels. And so when you just go for that first genital sneeze, you're not doing yourself or your partner a service because you're actually shortcoming yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sure you're like really eager to hear all about the level four of orgasm. And... Um, there's a total sense of fulfillment and, a t- and, and time and any sense of limitation disappear. So that's exactly what I was talking about, that like really different reality and um, multidimensional orgasm that sometimes I can experience. And there's a buzzing sensation of being connected to all there is 
without separation. Oh, yeah. That's actually... Uh, Osho talks about that, if you're familiar with Osho, about that moment of orgasm, how the separation of self and everything else disappears in that moment. Well, we're becoming really mystical there, but that's really, I think, the closest moment that you get to that being of like all that there is and the creator or spirit or whatever words you like to use in that mm-hmm. in, in that place. Yeah. And that... that idea is uh, in many different cultures they'll call it different things Mm -hmm. that sort of moment where uh, time stops Mm -hmm. and that separation doesn't exist anymore yeah wow and it really does happen it does oh wow okay so (laughs) (laughs) i know we we're gonna share with you ways to intensify your orgasms but i'm just like so happy with what we just shared i'm like let me bask in the glow of those (laughs) orgasms that's great (laughs) but we've only got a few minutes left in this episode and i really want people to be able to take something away from this episode if you're hearing all of this stuff about these different levels of orgasm and you're going what the fuck how like how do i get there how do i get there right we want to give you some stuff that you can do to help you get there Mm -hmm. practical stuff all right um well the very first thing is what we talked about in the beginning um get to that 45 minutes mark you gotta stay into a heightened state of pleasure for a sustained period of time and that means you have to train your body to to become just more accustomed to being excited. Yeah, and now ladies, this will be a little bit easier for you. You just have to slow down a little bit and not be worried about whether or not you're going to make it to the orgasm. You'll get there eventually. Guys, this could be a bit more challenging for you because the average man lasts anywhere from, you know, three to seven minutes, depending on whose study you read. One says three to five, one says five to seven. In either case, it's generally under 10 minutes. And we're telling you, you need to make it 45. That's a big jump. So you're going to have to work on that. If you need help with it, then contact us, work with us, go to powerandmastery.com mm-hmm. and, and uh, go through uh, either, um, uh, master your ejaculation and or sexual mastery. They will teach you everything you need to know to be able to do this, but you got to work on it because mm-hmm. most people, they've never learned how, and you will most likely, unless you're a prodigy, can't do it unless you practice it. Well, and it's not hard. It's just a switch. You need to learn how to turn on and off, but it's difficult sometimes to find the switch, but once you've found it, it well, gets and that switch can be different for different people. That's and, true. Then, you know, trust us, go through Master Your Ejaculation and Sexual Mastery, and you will know <laughs> everything you need to know. It won't require any weird tools, toys, pills, anything like that. The okay, second thing that you can do to intensify your orgasm is to tone your pelvic floor muscles. And I'm going to say that with a word of caution. And I'd love at some point to do an episode on, on pelvic floor muscles here, Kevin. Yeah, it's a big part of our courses in Power and Mastery, but we should really do an episode on it because Power Mastery is really geared towards men, Mm -hmm. and it would be really great to talk about that for both men and women. It works for both um, because, you know, the uh, experience of orgasm comes from a rhythmic contraction of your pelvic floor muscles. And if your pelvic floor muscles are too loose and not contracting, the intensity of the orgasm is not going to be strong. If you have chronic tension, you may not even be able to experience orgasm or they, they're just going to be really short-lived and like tensed, right? And so that's when pelvic floor muscles are essential. You need to have them not too loose and not too tight and you want to have tone in them and you want to have them to be supple, like have the image of a trampoline where it bounces and it's like, yeah, you can have that movement of like the bouncing, but it has resilience to that. And that's really what you want to do. So toning the pelvic floor muscles but um do it the right way so again just yeah check in with people and 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 celine has a whole protocol on how to do that she can teach you oh and i love to do that (laughs) (laughs) tell us about number three kevin oh number three number three is use your breath Mm -hmm. breathing is key to orgasms conscious rhythmic breathing Mm -hmm. so not just any breathing but conscious (laughs) rhythmic 
breathing. And, and what's funny is, is that if you really observe people, I don't know how many other people you've watched to have sex, but even if you just observe yourself, you realize a lot of people tend to hold their breath. Mm-hmm. And that's actually not what you want to do. You want to have you want to have conscious rhythmic breathing. And also in our Power Mastery courses, I know I keep saying it a lot, but so much of this is so relevant, but we have multiple different breathing mm-hmm. exercises to help you with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, the more you breathe, the more you feel. And coordinating your breath uh, with your partner is yet another step. I mean, it's one thing to master sort of the breathing on your own, but then if you can kind of get your breathing in sync with your partner and then you can both kind of ride the waves of both breath and orgasm at the same time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep it coming. <laughs> <laughs> and then last but not least, when it comes to orgasm, include multiple erogenous zones at the same time. And we are not limited to the ones that you just can think of, like... Um, by the way, we have a free ebook for you on how to pleasure a woman from head to toes mm-hmm. with, um, is it 21 erogenous zone? I think so. I don't remember how many it is, but it's a lot and it's all kinds of things. It's not just, you know, clitoris Clit and nipples. or nipples. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so and it, it it works for both like incorporate more than one area that feels pleasurable and you can train your body to respond and feel more sensations too so if you include more than one area you're going to intensify the sensations and you don't have to intensify the pressure uh, that you're giving all you need to do is just intensifying like because you you're spreading it and you're not focusing just on one point so ideally don't just focus on the genitals bring this energy to other place of the body absolutely and so those are those are four quick things. Well, not necessarily quick, but those are four <laughs> <laughs> quick because we delivered them in a quick fashion here on the show. But those are four things that you can do to help access deeper levels of orgasm, enjoy your orgasms more often, have more frequent orgasms. And there's so much more too. If you want to know more, reach out to us. We'd be happy to work with you and help you check out our online programs because there's so much more about orgasms and having better orgasms. All right. We wish you juicy, strong, fulfilling... Multiple... Orgasms. <laughs> we hope you liked this episode of the Love Lab Podcast. If you enjoyed this show, leave a comment and share it with your friends. And if you want more, we have an entire digital library with the best sex tips and relationship advice at CelineRemy.com. That's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y.com. So join us in the sex vault to continue this adventure. Thanks for listening. And remember, you're amazing.